Hello and welcome everybody to Flickr Effect, episode 353. We are recording this on Tuesday, December 20, what is it, 29th? Yeah. 2020. I'm David Lotz. Joining me is Michelle Hillard. Hello. Hello, so everyone. I said your last name weird that time. Hillard. Hillard? Well, like I said, Hill, Hill, Hillard. I don't know what I did. Play it back. It sounded odd. Anyway, how's it going? Uh, it's going well. It's just the two of us well. this week. Um, though you may, you will be able to hear this if you're listening to this on YouTube. It will be on YouTube, but we're not live on YouTube this week. No. So just an audio show this week. Uh, we couldn't work it out to get all of us on board, which is unfortunate, not only because, hey, I like when we're all there, mm-hmm. but it's like the first... It's just timing. It's the it's, it's the timing holidays. of the hi- holidays. This is what happens. I don't no, nobody's to blame, but it's just terrible timing of it's the holidays. But then we finally got a superhero film to talk about. Well, not only did we get <laughs> we a superhero film, we just got multiple decent films all released within forty eight hours of each other. Right, but but most of all, yeah, we you know if major you listen, motion picture. You listen to this show. We 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 like to talk about anything, but yeah, we like superhero movies. We like comic book movies. We like sci-fi we we like pop pop culture stuff wonder woman 1984 came out this weekend it's like it's like a a big okay finally we got a thing we're going to talk about spoilers and everything and now we we weren't able to do it yet but we are going to do that next weekend yes so what is that the third of january third of january 2021 we will we'll do a full thing we will record we'll be live on youtube full-on Talk about Wonder Woman 84, 1984, spoilers and all. That'll happen with Bobby and Yasha. In the yeah. meantime, we're going to fill the gap. You and I still uh, talk about some stuff we've been watching, including Wonder Woman. I do want to talk about Wonder Woman. It's Yeah. We're not just going to hold off. We'll share our thoughts tonight, spoiler free. Yes. And there's a couple other things to discuss. Yeah. I mean, like, you know... Unfor- unfortunately, unfortunately, it's the holidays and we all have busy lives. But it was just weird because it's like, you know, <laughs> thanks to COVID, it's been an interesting year for film. And um, yeah, we just I feel like we haven't had anything really spectacular that we've all been, you know, clawing at to watch really since Tenet, to be really honest. Um, But then, yeah, one woman comes out on Christmas Day. And so, yeah, like between just one finding the time during the holidays to watch the film, let alone the four of us sync up our watches to make it all work out. It's hard to 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 do that sometimes. But no, I am looking forward to talking about all the fun things that have happened that we have watched other than the plethora of Christmas films that have happened. So before so many Christmas movies, I don't know, I, I, we'll, we'll hold off on Wonder Woman for right now. Oh, uh, nice. what else have you watched this week? Just Soul. Yeah, uh, let's we watched see. Soul Wonder last Woman night. We watched Soul last night, and I think it's just it's just been a lot of Christmas movies. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we did watch. We watched a lot of Christmas movies. I think we, you know, we talked about. I mean, our last episode was all about Christmas our top movies. five Christmas movies, <laughs> and those movies plus a few others we tried to fit in before Christmas. Mm-hmm. We were watching, if not one movie a night, two movies a night. Mm-hmm. And it, and I, I almost sound, I feel like I sound like I'm like, like we were like forcing ourselves, like, oh, we got to watch these movies. Like, no, we want to. We, I enjoy it's the watching holidays. them. It's like, okay, uh, we're, which ones are we going to watch tonight while we wrap presents or. You know, do last minute Christmas shopping on Amazon on our phones or, <laughs> yeah. you know, or yeah, no, all, all an, stuff we've seen before. Yeah, but they're, they're enjoyable. They put me in the mood. They keep me in the holiday mood and right. spirit. And yeah, even if I've seen them a multitude of times, it's enjoyable to have them on. Like one of my favorite things to do is to have white Christmas on while I'm wrapping presents. It's like, for me, it's a quintessential, I'm wrapping presents while white Christmas is on because I know every single word that's coming out of everybody's mouth and hand gestures and dance movements. So I don't, I do not have to give 100% of my attention to that film. I can do a lot right. of other things while it is on while still hearing the dialogue and hearing the music and keeping me in the joyful warmth and glow of the Christmas spirit. So, 
since we're talking about Christmas and all the Christmas stuff we watched <laughs> and and wrapping presents while we watch Christmas movies and having holiday treats while we watch Christmas movies, <laughs> I feel the need to bring up then. I, I So I took the whole week off. Yeah. Um, which I don't normally do around Christmas. Um, which is es- fortunate this which year. is especially weird for me, like when I think years back, growing up here in Orlando, being a Disney cast member, also working at Universal for a time, but mostly being a Disney cast member, having many years where I worked on Christmas, like mm. you know, I mean, yeah, I've been there, done that. To finally get to a point where I actually had not only Christmas Day off, like Christmas Day off now is finally a norm for me. I'm like, oh man, I'm like everyone else. And not only that, this year I finally had like I took the whole week off. It was it was odd for me, but I digress. I was busy doing last minute Christmas shopping as I always do, and. You know, we finally get to Wednesday and I finally have a day where I'm like, all right, I'm going to stay at home. There's no errands to run. No errands to run. I'm finally going to sit and just wrap presents. I have no last minute presents I need to buy. Uh, you know, I, I my first thought was like, what Christmas movie could I put on that we're not planning on watching together like at in the evening at the end of oh, the day? Yeah, yeah. Like, what could I put on, uh, you know? That would be entertaining to kind of fit this. I feel the need to bring up, if you can hear it in the background, our dog is like walking back and forth. She's pacing. Back and forth. She is pacing. The house. With this bone that we gave her for Christmas. She's pacing the house. She keeps coming into the room. (laughs) She is now left again. She's probably going to come back like four more times. I like tried to ignore her, but it's like she just kept doing <laughs> it. Now I'm like, it. okay. And I mean, the, on the tile floor here, I'm sure the microphones are picking this up. So that's why I'm bringing it up. Your little nails, tippy tappy, yeah. tippy tappy. Anyway, Sorry. So that day comes. I'm like, what am I going to put on? You know what? I'm curious. I think I'll watch the first episode of A Teacher on Hulu. <laughs> so not Christmas. <laughs> Which I wish Bobby were here because Bob, I know I know Bobby's listening to this going, what in the hell? Here it is again. Of David went and watched something he's never talked about once and just randomly picked something. Yep. And I'm probably blowing his mind. But anyway, so I decide to watch randomly a teacher, which I don't know why. What's that like, streaming on again? It's on Hulu. Okay. It's FX. It's an FX show, but it's on Hulu. It's FX, but it's on. Okay, right. yeah, got it. Um, so I decided to check it out. I'm immediately intrigued by the fact that the episodes are only 30 minutes, or in when you're not watching without when you're watching without commercials, like 23 minutes. Right. Which, which we don't have commercials in ours. I mean, sure, there's plenty of shows like that, and I've talked on here before how I like to have shows that are. 30 minute episodes there's something about it that fits so much more easily into my busy busy life hey don't get me wrong i love a good hour drama or hour anything but a lot of those shows i tend to go oh man i don't have time to fit that in when it's 30 minutes it just feels so much easier and then i ended up binging the entire thing like in a day (laughs) well at the time of there were nine episodes available out of the 10 Right, so the last one hadn't dropped. It dropped today. I watched it today, by the way. Oh. But, um, so yeah, I watched all nine episodes that had aired up to that point. They were just they were bite-sized little 23-minute episodes, and right. I was just doing stuff, and I'm like, ah, you know what? The show is interesting enough that I'm like, I want to see what happens next. I want to see what happens next. Right. How's this going to play out? Yeah. You're cra- having a day off. What's this crazy woman going to do this time? Like, Right. All in all, I'll say when it comes to the show. So, well, if you don't know what the show is, the show, A Teacher, is set in Austin, Texas, I think in 2014. Not sure why they picked that year. (laughs) Uh, But anyway, set in 2014 in Austin, Texas. Kate Mara plays the lead. She's a high school teacher. She's a new high school teacher at this high school, I think coming from middle school or something, English teacher. And basically, she ends up having a, a relationship with one of her students. Um, mm. Played by now I'm blanking on his name Nick the Robinson, scandal. who was in uh, Love Simon. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh right? wow. Oh, he's such a baby. Why? That's that surprises me. It doesn't say known for. Like so, we have IMDb open in front of us. I go and oh, bring up funny. Nick Nick Robinson's stuff that that is the same actor i'm not crazy right yeah love simon he played simon yeah no it's the same actor he did jurassic world i remember right 
Uh, I guess he was in Everything, Everything. Oh, yeah. He was in Boardwalk Empire, I guess, which I didn't know. He must have been young when he did Boardwalk Empire. I just would have thought Love, Simon would have been one of those four known four spots. Yeah, I have to agree. Anyway, Dick Hmm. Robinson plays the high schooler that she ends up having a relationship with. He's so young. (laughs) Just saw his birth date, and I'm just like, oh. Actually, I was wondering about that. Watching him in the movie, I had to, I had this thought. I'm like, I feel like this is the kind of guy who's going to be totally typecast as like a high schooler for who knows how long because he just has this kind of baby. He does. Face. I mean, Not he's baby up, face, but he's in his twenties now. But right. still, like, yeah, he has a very young looking face, and he's going to be able to pull off. He's probably going to pull it off for another year or two, but pretty soon he's going to have to move into the college years. Where he's 25, like, but yeah. yeah, he he can still pull off high schooler. No, he totally for can. A bit. It's kind of creepy. Anyway, that's the premise of the show. But yeah, I'm immediately like, this is not the kind of show I would think would be in like 30 minute episodes. That really. Kind oh, of, really? Like, that, like you thought it was going to be longer. Yeah. This kind of drama. Like, huh. wouldn't you? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I could see it. So, by the way, the creator of the show, Hannah Fidel, I guess is how you say her name. Uh, I didn't realize the show is based on a film she did also called A Teacher. Which was released in 2013. Oh, uh, which was released in 2013. Hence why this so show is in 2014, maybe. I, I, I guess maybe that's why. I don't know. There we have it, folks. Uh, I'll just say quickly, it was interesting. Um, for the most part, I didn't have a problem with the, the bite-sized 23-minute episodes until the finale. The finale oh. I watched today. Left you wanting more? I was like it's over like that was quick <laughs> like it's over over <laughs> yeah it, the, the finale i i mean i just watched the finale like two hours ago or something like that uh. three hours ago and i'm still not i'm like i mean i don't want to say i'm processing it like it was some big event but i'm still thinking about it i'm not sure what i think about that finale but it was just fast i felt like this show hmm. as, I feel like, especially at the end here, we could still do like three more episodes or something. Oh, like, really? It still had more it was depth like, to it. That's it. I mean, and this is like, I'm pretty sure just a mini series. It's not, there's not going to be like a season no, yeah, two. Yeah, it sounds like this one's done. Um, it's done. Yeah, I don't know what to think of it. Oh. You should watch it, though. You seem perplexed. I could see it in your face. Yeah, I am a little. There was nothing about the finale. I'll say this without talking spoilers. There's nothing about the finale I didn't find r- wrong. I guess just, was, just went by went you just went wow, wow we wrapped like, that up what what was said what should have been said was said <laughs> i i don't disagree with anything that happened mm-hmm. but it just it, went really quick it was very quick huh. i think this show these characters deserved a little more gotcha was, i guess the best way to put it and then right, on the same day right after i finished uh binging the nine episodes at that point of a teacher I decided to jump into the flight attendant. <laughs> Bobby's, to, Bobby's to, head is exploding somewhere out in the world. To complete my gift wrapping journey of watching completely not Holly Fair. Super nothing to do with Christmas. I didn't finish a flight, the flight attendant yet. I'm only four or five episodes in now. I can't even remember. Mm. Like halfway there, I think. I think it's ten episodes. I think I watched five. Um, and so far... I mean, it's about what I expected. I mean, it's not high end drama, (laughs) you know, it's seems to have a comedic edge to it. Kind of. It's kind of like comedy, maybe it's dark. humor. It's almost I would argue it's almost like the quality of like a like an ABC drama, but but free of the. Like constraints of a FCC broadcast (laughs) show. Right. But that's not an, I'm not saying that like it's a bad thing necessarily. Right. And Kaylee Cuoco is perfect in it. Like she's perfectly cast in the part she's in. (laughs) Like, I don't know the, the behind the scenes of, I, I, well, I, I know the the show is based on a book. But Mm -hmm. I don't know the behind the scenes kind of development of this show if she was like the the plan all along when whoever decided they wanted to make a, you know, series of the show or where she fit in in the casting process. But she's perfect in it. Like her dynamic 
which is similar to what you know of her from like Big Bang Theory, but she's very good in it. She's she's kind of perfect for the part. And yeah, by the way, the show, I don't know if you heard it, it got picked up for a second season. So it is, oh, okay. it is coming back. Oh, cool. Which even made me a little more intrigued when I heard, okay, it's coming back for another season. Maybe I'll give this a shot. So not all questions are going to get answered in this first season. I don't know. We'll find out. I'm wondering, I am curious about that. Is this first season going to be a complete arc end of what we're seeing? Which, I mean, it's not like a big spoiler. You can see in the commercials. It's basically she... She has a relationship with somebody she meets on a flight right. and he dies like he's murdered mm-hmm. and she doesn't know how, even though she was there, she wakes up to find him dead and murdered and she's trying to figure out, oh my God, what happened? Right. Of course, like you were there. So people are going to suspect you and she freaks out, especially not only because, I mean, she just woke up in bed with somebody who was dead and murdered um but is she's in a foreign country so she's worried about that aspect so then that kind of plays into her decisions about not just you know picking up the phone and going hey there's a dead guy next to me like so it goes from there right um but uh, yeah i like it so far i'm gonna keep watching it Ooh. no I've, I've been interested in both of those shows and just haven't i've not had the time to watch shows like that in the moment it's just been if i've had free time i've watched christmas stuff right because it's been very limited free time um but no they seem like they're really good shows i'd be i'm curious to watch them before we move on i mean you brought up the christmas thing again and this this thought just popped in my head of all the christmas stuff we watched this year was there any new thoughts about anything did you ever like was there anything you watched this year and you're like or does this ever happen any year when you rewatch all your Christmas stuff? Like, oh, maybe this is even better than I thought it was, or not as good, or maybe I'm not liking this as much anymore. Am I making sense with my question? Yeah, no. So, so it's funny. So we watched uh, the night before the movie, the night before, right? Um, and I still really enjoyed it. I will say I enjoyed it more than the very first time we watched it. But I think I enjoyed it about the same as I enjoyed it last year. So no more, no less about the same. <laughs> okay. But that's not a bad thing. And you enjoyed it last year. Right. Oh, yeah. Last year, I definitely was like, man, this movie. Shoot. This is good stuff. And it was still enjoyable. And then, and this happens, it seems like every year when I watch this other film, The, uh, the Family Stone, I feel like every year, different things in that movie hit me differently. I don't know if it's like different things in my own life kind of like hit and reflect and kind of bounce on me or I'm just in a weird emotional mood and certain things kind of touch on that. I don't know, but I feel like there's always something new or for some reason, maybe not new, but it's something that's like, it'll just ping me more that year. Like it'll make me think more or make me feel more or it'll make me just see something in a different light kind of a thing. And again, this year, watching a family stone and like it was just a whole new thing that got me and i was just like man i was like this movie just keeps every year i watch it i only watch it one time and i watch it at christmas every year there's just something different about it to me and i like that yeah. it's not a bad thing it's a good thing it's just very like oh man wow that's never hit me like that before right. that's really getting me this year so anyways that would be basically all i have to say about christmas thing I think. Oh, there was a movie that you had started that I wanted. I've, I've kind of been curious to watch, but due to me just coming home from work and I think Christmas shopping, I got home like right in the middle of it. It was the Christmas party, hot work Christmas party. Oh yeah, that was one that one of the days. Yeah, I was off and before you got home, I wanted to put something Christmassy on. On I think it was like Monday or Tuesday, and I ended up getting um, office christmas party office christmas party with uh i don't know everybody in that uh jennifer G- aniston jason bateman jason bateman it. um, what's his name that curly haired comedy guy that i can't think of now uh, <laughs> the curly in deadpool uh yeah and, and he was in silicon else. valley um yeah what's his name his name is, drum roll please, uh, T.J. Miller. T.J. Miller. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Olivia Munn's in it. Kate oh, McKinnon. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, anyways, I'll, I missed the first half. Yeah, you missed the better half. 
And the second half <laughs> seemed it seemed kind of cute, a little crazy. I'll say the parts with Kate McKinnon, Kate McKinnon seemed very uh, funny. But what did you think about that movie? I mean, overall, it was entertaining. But yeah, it well, okay, overall, it was entertaining. Um, the first half was better than the second half because the movie falls into a similar kind of trope that I, I think you pointed out right after it ended. Like, it, it's, I don't know. It's almost like it needs to have like a, what a man, that's the best way to put this. It's like movies like this feel like they need to have like a, almost not necessarily a bigger theme. A higher purpose. But like a higher like, meaningful yeah something in that something bigger happening in that third act than really needs to happen for this kind of movie it's just not it's just necessary a stupid comedy like, this is just a stupid comedy kind of like in the you know it needs to just like christmas vacation doesn't necessarily it kind of has a big event that happens with him and his bonus mm-hmm. yeah but, but it, it, it stays within the realm of silliness right exactly here this falls into that, I think, problem of, oh, but let's let's have some, you know, thing that pays off and everyone is saved in a, in a bigger way than, than, than that is necessary. It's not necessary. Yeah. Like, no, I don't I feel like I'm not making sense. I'm not putting this well, but it's hard to describe it. I, I know what you're saying. But in plus, if you, you know, you missed the first half, there was a lot of stuff that happened in the second half that kept. I could, you know, referring to things that had happened that you hadn't seen. So I was like, man, I, she probably thinks it's stupid. But overall, I mean, I inter- it was entertaining, but it, it was entertaining. It something, something good for the background. Right. That was one of my few new Christmas movies this year. Yeah. So of all the movies we watched, did you have, I'm posing the same question that you asked me. Is there anything that like you, your opinion changed on it? Your opinion changed for the better, changed for the worse? Things hit you differently. Uh, I know I asked that question of you, and I don't really have a, a good response myself. Uh, I mean, I would say maybe I even enjoyed the night before even more. Oh, really? Like, I yeah. It, now I watch it, and I'm like, what was wrong with me the first time I saw it? So, I know. <laughs> were we like not in the Christmas mood like, when we saw it? Because th- we saw it in theater. I remember. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I remember, you know, left kind of going, oh, that was enjoyable. But I think we both were like, eh, it's forgettable. And we'd move on with our lives. And right. then I don't even think we watched it the next Christmas. But it was the Christmas even after that that we finally put it on. And we we're like, gosh, dang it. This movie is hilarious. The, <laughs> like, the, so especially the, 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 the kind of storyline with Seth Rogen's character yes. and how high he is that yes. night. Yes. Like this, this, so this year, like the scene in particular, when he goes to the nativity scene. <laughs> like, so you were losing it I this year. I was losing it. You were losing it this year. <laughs> it's just so good. I'm laughing because I remember how much you were laughing. Like it really hit you this yeah. year. And the nice thing is too, is like, man, that scene could have gone on longer. And I know when you, when I'm watching but it. But they I'm, cut it off at the right. Right. When I'm watching it, I'm like, oh man, like it's like, we let's keep going. But no, it doesn't. Because if it keeps going, then it's just going to die off and get be too much. It, it just doesn't linger on stuff. It's. Like, this is hilarious. Let's move on. It very uh, quickly, like, yeah. it, it ends at the right note. And then he winds up getting, talking to his wife. Mm-hmm. And then even she's like, holy cow, you need to leave. Our family's showing up. Go. This, you need, and she's trying so hard to be so kind about it, too. That's the funniest part. She's trying to be like, honey, you need to leave. You need to go away. And he's just like, I love you. And I'm so happy. And she's like, you need to leave now. And she tries to shove him away so hard. And he's just not getting it. And it's hilarious and watching the two of them interact. No, it's funny. And that church scene still kills me every time. Mm -hmm. And again, just the dialogue between the two of them, how she's just like, nope, you're here now. This is how this is. Welcome to your, (laughs) welcome to your hell. This is happening. Oh, it's, it's good. It's a good one. It's one yeah. that I didn't think would be ever in my catalog of Christmas films. And it is. It's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I no, was, but beyond that, I didn't have anything this year that I was, I don't know, particularly. Did you think at any point in time, like, I really do enjoy this movie as Christmas, but maybe I can move it into an every other Christmas slot. And I asked that because for a while, White Christmas for me got moved into an every other Christmas because I've, really? I have been watching that film since I was in diapers. Oh, burnout. 
So I get to a point somewhere in my like late twenties where it turned into an every other Christmas and I was alternating white Christmas with meet me in St. Louis. And so they were getting alternated each Christmas and it was nice because it was refreshing. That's a good question because I will say this. Oh, I know I was ruining (laughs) it for you that night. What? White Christmas? Oh no, no, I'm not talking about white Christmas. Oh, Not, not in particular, but kind of along with what you're saying, you know, we've, quickly like created a couple of traditions with our like for instance die hard we're like okay i like, I like this tradition of watching die hard every yep. we started watching at christmas eve night mm-hmm. and i'm not gonna say i want that to change but there's no even though and i mean yeah i know when you get older years go by faster and faster and <laughs> it feels like last christmas just happened you feel like we just watched it didn't you like i felt like i had just seen it and <laughs> <laughs> and um, and that same with some of the other movies we watched. And there's a part of me that's like, is the magic already gone? Of like, all right, it's Christmas Eve, we're gonna watch Die Hard. Tradition. And then you know, like this year we started, and it's like, I don't know, we've been here before. <laughs> like, should we almost change it up just to change it up because it just makes it more interesting? Like. Yeah, we fit in Die Hard maybe this year. Maybe we don't. We fit in some other stuff. Or right. I think there is something in just kind of changing things up and doing things differently. And then when, yeah, tradition is tradition. But at the same time, it gets a little boring. Like, all right. Like, you know, we're we're busy doing other stuff while Die Hard's on. It's fine. Like, oh, let's just do this. And yeah, yeah, maybe we put it on and it's just not a... Because I will say usually it's it's everything's done. It's Christmas Eve. The kids are in bed. It's officially like it's done. We're done. We're relaxing. Now we just enjoy the the wonderfulness that is the holiday. And so we put it on and we give our full attention to it. So maybe it should get shuffled into the it's a background wrapping presents film again. Like maybe it gets shuffled into that more mixture. Not a 100% attention mixture. Or it gets shuffled into a... It's tradition, but every other year. I think too. I would just prefer next year to spread. The yeah, we did a lot out throughout the in month. A week. We didn't really watch anything throughout the month, and then it was like, okay, it's a week. Let's watch everything. That's kind of like how I handled the top ten. Is basically how we handled it. Yeah, we did a lot in a in a week's time. So I mean, that's where I am with the Christmas stuff. Yeah. I still love Christmas films. They still really keep me in the spirit. You know, I never, I didn't watch uh, the Santa Claus, Tim Allen's The no, Santa Claus this month. No, I didn't watch that this year. Huh, we totally missed that one. Hmm. No, you can't watch it. Not allowed. No, yeah, I'm off to wait a whole nother like 360 days. Right. Shoot. Okay. Anyways. Um, so, and then last night we watched Soul. Oh, yeah, the other movie that dropped at Christmas. Yep, that dropped Christmas Day, right? Christmas yeah. Day on Disney Plus. Disney Pixar film that, of course, was supposed to hit theaters. They decided, I forget how long ago, it wasn't that long ago that they made the announcement that it was going to go Disney Plus. But because I feel like it was supposed to be a late summer release, wasn't it? Oh, man, I don't Initially. remember. Initially. I'll have to look that up while you while you vamp or something. I don't know. <laughs> I um, feel like it was supposed to be a late summer release, edging toward fall. If I remember correctly, but this seems, you know, 2020 has me thinking that the year is, you know, three. Um, it was originally scheduled for a June 19th, 2020 release. Oh, so kind of middle of summer. It was delayed to November 20th. Oh, um, they were going to do a Thanksgiving thing. And then it was eventually, yeah, released on Disney Plus on Christmas. On Christmas. Okay, look at that. Yeah. Hmm. Well, so, the movie Soul. Yeah, on October 8th, they, they made that decision. Sorry, I'm kind of scanning this information as we talk. Oh, yeah, okay. uh, how on October 8th, Disney announced that the film's theatric, theatrical release had been canceled altogether and would premiere exclusively on Disney Plus on December 25th. I'm gotcha. reading from the Wikipedia page I see right now. That. Well, for um, anyone who's not familiar with the movie Soul from Disney Pixar. Mm-hmm. Oh, you'd like me to do it? Okay. I mean, you, you started. Um. <laughs> So, what was our main character's name? Uh, Our main character's name. Joe. Joe Gardner. Yes. Main character, Joe Gardner. Huge jazz enthusiast, player, and teacher. Um, Goes through a 
we'll, we'll, we'll say an, uh, a very serious event in his life and his life process and quest <laughs> of life. And basically what, what follows is um, his journey to understand his purpose and or the meaning to anyone's purpose uh, to life. Um, it, yeah, it's voiced by uh, Jamie Foxx. Um, and then the co-person character that goes along with Joe Gardner is voiced by Tina Fey. And basically it's the two of them kind of figuring out what what it's all about. What is life all about? What is the meaning? Why are we here? Right. But not really answering why are we here, but more just like, what's it? Why? Why should we live life? What's that's a better way of put it. I think that's a better not way. Why to put are it. we here? But yeah. like, why live life? Right. What's life all about? Yeah. What is being a human about? Right. What you? What should you focus on to bring you happiness? Kind of thing. I wouldn't say focus. I mean, just, I don't know. Anyways. So yeah, that's our extremely weird, naive, <laughs> vague way to say yeah, yeah. what the movie's about. But, um, yeah, no, uh, I'll go on the books and say, I really enjoyed this film. Um, it has a really nice message and it was really an enjoyable story to watch unfold and to see the characters, kind of have that aha moment and to kind of have everything click into place. Um, and then honestly, the, the, the additional cast of characters that you meet along the way are really enjoyable as well. And what I like is I feel like you're not getting the other people that are in the film. You're not getting them for like too long of a period for them being like an additional cast person. You're getting them for just the right amount of time. I think, and it's really nice. Um, but yeah, like, uh, gosh, like very quickly I picked up like the person who plays, uh, Joe Gardner's mother is, um, oh gosh, who is it? Is Felicia Rashad. And then the person who plays the woman who he plays for in the jazz band is Angela Bassett. Like it's very like they have these wonderful voices and you hear them and you're just like, Oh, I know exactly who that is. But there's other voices that would come on. And I'm like, who is that? That sounds so familiar. And I can't remember. And then it's like the, the credits start rolling. And I'm just like, oh, you're kidding me. That was Graham Norton this whole time. Like, what? That's crazy. And then Quest Love is in there. Like, it was cool to, like, see all these names go back. Uh, Debbie Diggs is a name in there. Um, I'm trying to think. Who else? Oh, yeah. Rachel House. You know who Rachel House is, right? Hmm. The, the the hunt for the wilder people oh her okay uh, uh thor yeah uh, thor ragnarok ragnarok yeah. yeah rachel house was uh she played a what was it a jerry or a terry terry a terry yeah i say that because there's multiple people with the same name and it's hard to multiple even be jerry's yeah it's multiple it's, it's hard to even explain how that works out but yeah no it was just cool like it was just i don't know it was just really fun to like hear voices kind of come up anyways i liked it i was very happy with it i thought the music was really good like really good yeah trent reznor and atticus ross scored it um i forget the gentleman's name i say i believe gentleman uh that did the jazz music the jazz music was film. really solid but uh his name i think was john yeah john batiste batiste John Batiste. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's who did the music. No, it was really, it was really good. I really liked it. It was one of those that like it kind of sits with you for a little bit afterwards. And yeah, back to the score. There was actually a scene. It was just so beautiful. Like the scene is unfolding, and the music was just done so well. And I have to say, this movie does have moments that are reminiscent of inside out like there's and it's not like it's the same it's like there's just like shadowings of like inside outness to this film and that's not a bad thing it was it was really enjoyable the whole time i don't know i really i'm i'm very happy with this i film. think it's hard not to think of inside out when you think of this movie i mean it's parts of your brain it's, it, it's you know. a, kind of uh, it's telling a story that's not the same but it's kind of all on the same lines of, it's kind of cerebral yeah 
I mean, the second I saw the trailer, it was the first thing I thought of. It was like, oh, this seems like Inside Out, but this is going to be something not about our emotions. Right. But kind of bigger than that in a way. Yeah. No, I thought the film was quite good. Um, yeah, you seem quite pleased with it. Uh, yeah, the movie is very good. Uh, it's another example of of the kind of stuff that Pixar does and then basically all the other animation studios are just down here doing this kind of stuff. <laughs> and then Pixar puts out stuff like this. Yeah. Which is just like, this is like art, you know, it's just leaps and bounds in storytelling and in picture and yeah, in, in film. It's cr- the, yeah. Yeah. Just no. <laughs> Like, I mean, that's right. nothing against like a lot of the other great stuff that other animation studios do, you know, uh, what is it, Illumination and mm-hmm. DreamWorks mm-hmm. and, you know, many others. I mean, you know, we look at, uh, you know, Into the Spider-Verse, stuff like that is fantastic. But some of the stuff Pixar does, and this is definitely the the stuff in Pixar's wheelhouse that I I love compared to other stuff that Pixar does that is much more Disney esque, <laughs> like right. you know, like a car sequel and right and stuff. Yes. That I'm just like, oh god, please stop making movies like this. Like yes, but this, this yeah. Inside Out, Wally, like Up. Uh, yeah, these are stories that elevate animation and storytelling to a new level. Yeah, no, th- this movie is quite good. Um, I don't. I don't have much else to add to it that you haven't already said. You've already talked about the movie, but it's, Did I, it's, un, it's unfortunate. You know, I mean, I we we've talked about this before. Not really. It's it's so different in this day and age now. This year and age of movies not going to theaters and going to streaming services. And it was so easy back when movies were in theaters to just go, "Yep, look, those are the box office numbers, and that's how well they did." And now we don't really know like mm. other than when a when a company like netflix goes well we're making another season of this or we're making a sequel to that movie then you kind of know well it must have done pretty well because they decided to make another one but it's like mm. the only thing we have to go against is like subscribers that subscribed that day like oh there's a huge uptick in subscribers in the 48 hours of that movie releasing and but even but then you like we don't point that we that's don't what that know was. any of this information like the, right. that's the difference i mean you know you can jump on box office mojo and look at box office numbers every weekend that's public but here right that you just kind of go hey what's the kind of social media vibe behind soul yes. there's a lot of people yeah. talking about soul it must be big like yeah so it's unfortunate I, I wanted to say it's unfortunate that this didn't go to theaters it is it just because i feel like it deserves to make a lot of money <laughs> and it's not gonna <laughs> it make does. It does. um but i mean it's making money for disney obviously they didn't just throw it in the trash i mean they put it on their their streaming service which is makes a lot of money for them and uh i'm still happy for you know these filmmakers that made this movie because it's i think it's fantastic i thought it was quite good yeah so. no it's very good <laughs> this movie is very 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 good yeah and then there was wonder woman 1984 i didn't mean to put it like that like oh well then there was that that's kind of how that came out though (laughs) well i'm just saying then that's what's next well so yeah uh wonder woman 1984 it's no secret that i have been clawing at the walls for this movie (laughs) and i've been very excited about this film and while still trying to maintain expectations to a realistic level. And I'll just go, I'll go out and say right now, I enjoyed Wonder Woman 84. I liked it. I did not love it. I have a lot of, there. there's a lot of things that I take issue with in Wonder Woman 1984. But overall, when I left the theater, and yes, I say when I left the theater, I went and saw it in the theater with you, David. When I left the theater overall, I felt happy. I still had things that I said, no, I'm not happy with that aspect and this aspect. But overall, I'm content with the film. Could it have been better? Yes. (laughs) Could it have been worse? Yes. (laughs) 
it ended up being a nice middle road film, in my opinion. And I will say in the film industry, sequels have a way of either being really horrible or surprisingly good and, and and quite good. And this one, I would say, falls somewhere in the middle of it's decent. It's an OK follow up to the first. And all I can say is that I hope that we can gain better footing within the the telling of the story of Diana Prince with the Wonder Woman 3. And I can talk more, but I'm going to kind of leave it at that and let you Well, I talk. mean, we're not going to talk about spoilers. We're going to make this pretty brief because we're going to talk about this movie a lot on the next episode. Yes, I know that. Um, but... Uh, I will say, I mean, yeah, I know I, my lead into this made it sound like, well, the soul was great, but then there was Wonder Woman. Like, not to say Wonder Woman 1984 is as good as soul. No, it's not. But I enjoyed Wonder Woman 1984. I I walked out of the theater. I was I was happy with what I seen, what I had seen. I I feel like my thoughts are pretty similar to yours. Uh, I didn't love it. I didn't think it was the best. And I don't think it's as good as the first Wonder Woman film. But overall, I enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, I think it's too long. Yeah, I think there was and a I'm good not, 20 minutes that could have been against, knocked out. I'm not against length in general. But yeah, the, the, the movie, I think, was a little too long. It didn't need to be that long. Yeah. Um, uh, you you said something after the fact when we finally talked a little bit about it, which I think I hadn't really thought about, and I think it's very true because this movie, since we've seen it, and I've been trying not to be too kind of influenced by what I now read on Twitter and other aspects of social media because there seems to be a lot of hate out there for this a movie. A lot of haterade for what um, we're ready for. And I feel I, I I fear when I walk out of a movie like this that like I enjoy, but then I'm unsure about certain things and I'm still digesting it. But then I start to consume the stuff I see online and I don't want it to influence how I feel about it. You know, right, I want to right. form my own opinion. But you mentioned something which I think is true. I hadn't thought about. I, I would guarantee you that a lot of those people, not all of them, but a lot of those people probably enjoyed Aquaman. And I just don't I don't get it. I'm sorry. I do yeah. not understand this movie, even if it is just good and not great, it's leaps and bounds better than Aquaman. I agree I, with you. I, I I know I hate on Aquaman and I'm I do hating too. on it now because I don't yeah. think it's a very good it's movie. It's a really crap movie. <laughs> it's, very, it's really not good. Uh, I was <laughs> I was talking to Carlton, um, Carlton, who's been on the show before. We've, we've mentioned him before, a friend of mine. Um, and I was talking to him the other night about this and, you know, he even on the phone because he kind of he's a big DC guy and he likes to talk of DC. And he was even saying, yeah, Aquaman's hard to defend. <laughs> like and for him to say that, like it took a lot. That took a lot of for him to say because he doesn't like admitting that kind of no, stuff. He, he kind of likes to play this kind of <laughs> like, hey, all of DC uh, is great. Uh, but he's even like, yeah, Aquaman, that's tough. Um, yeah, no, I. I'm just assuming that a lot of people that hate on this also enjoyed Aquaman because Aquaman seemed to get a lot of love and I don't know where that was coming from. And, I still and that's don't why get it. I was bringing the comparison up is right. because I feel like I feel like I left Aquaman going, what a show did I just walk yeah, out of? That I, that I did not walk out of unsure about. No, my I knew I, 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 I hated knew that I movie. I did not enjoy it. Uh, and and yet the praises that were coming from just the general audience and people on Twitter, people were saying how amazing Aquaman was. And I'm like, did we watch the same film? Because that was bad. But then it's interesting how this is getting a lot of hate. And I'm like, really? Because I don't know if we saw the same film. I'm not saying it's amazing, but... It is. If I look at the, the the Warner Brothers DC catalog, this is better than quite a lot of what we've seen of recent years. Um, in my opinion, right. way better than Aquaman. Way, way, way better. Better than BVS. Better than I would say it's better than Justice League. I mean, I don't think that's saying much. 
<laughs> no, but I'm saying if I look at the catalog and people were, com- you know, they're complaining about one of them, 84. And I'm like, but yet still, it's way better than these right. other DC right. films in the last five, 10 years. Yeah. Like no, it's it's. I don't think it's. I don't think it's deserving of the dislike it's getting right now mm. on social media, and that makes me sad because I just don't think it's quite that worthy. Are there issues that I have in this film? I, I yes, and we'll get into that later. I do. There are things that I go, mm, but overall, like. I mean, I want to touch on some things. Like, I think one thing I like about this movie, and one. And I think it's an aspect that maybe hurts it for a larger audience that is younger than us is this movie being set in the 80s. Also, it doesn't just look like an 80s movie in certain respects. It it feels even the way the story is told, the way it's shot, I guess it just it feels like an 80s movie. I remember thinking we talked about this off air. Like I was watching it at one point thinking, man, this almost feels feels like the old Christopher Reeve Superman films. It's it, it almost has a Richard Donner Christopher Reeves film to, yeah. feel to it. And it really did actually. There's moments I was like this is very reminiscent. And I I wonder if there is a large chunk of audience out there not as familiar with 80s films that that's lost on them, you know? Like and Oh man, where was I going to go with this? <laughs> Um, I think it's a generational thing for some people. I think that's a general generational thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. My brain was going to go somewhere. It's totally just, oh, pew, gone. <laughs> um, uh, overall, again, I, I enjoyed it, but man, it's killing me that I can't remember what I was going to say. It sounded like you were going somewhere I too. Was, I was going you really somewhere were. With that, no, I think. I think there's, and I kind of, my, I'll be honest, my feeling is one, this is a very, it's, it's, it's set in the eighties and this feels like an eighties movie. Like I felt like I was watching an eighties movie, watching the way the story was being unfolded, but also just the, the general color scheme, the way things were angled, there were just things done in it that was very eighties. But having said that also to me, there were moments I felt like I was watching the actual comic book come to life like it felt like I was watching like a comic animated series on screen like it felt like a very direct like link from from that world to this world whereas in Marvel I feel like there's a lot more softening in a lot of films especially in the Avenger films they're not so I never feel like like the pages of the comic are jumping out at me when I'm watching those films here there were general moments I was like god this is like what this is like flipping pages and I'll go ahead and say it especially the the opening sequence that takes place in a mall which you see in in the trailer is this and huge... that we saw at Comic Con like yeah. how many years ago was that? <laughs> we saw God, that, that feels like in Hall H. Ever ago in Hall H and Comic Con, God rest its soul. Um, yeah, like you know, we're watching the the mall scene kind of unfold, and it felt like flipping through comics stills through the the I can't think what they're called now the like the frames frames. It felt like watching comic frames. Like I was like, my God, which excited me, and, and I say that because like. I, I liked that feeling. Like for me, I felt like I was watching something like as I was a kid, like watching it unfold that way. I was like, God, this is great. You know, and like, and that kind of kept resonating on and off throughout the film. And I really kind of liked that in my opinion. And then there was honestly times that it felt like I was watching the old Linda Carter show sometimes. Like it literally, there were these moments and I was just like, man, this is like watching Linda Carter in action. This is amazing. You know, like it was kind of cool to me. I am now officially an older generation and I'm sure there are people that are younger than me. They're going, this is crap. <laughs> but I thought it was enjoyable for, for many different aspects. I think other people would enjoy. Yeah. I would argue that, uh, even though I enjoyed it in hindsight, uh, one, I think I would have preferred to have seen a movie that was post, basically uh quote unquote kind of present tense or you know like post bvs and post justice league yeah I, no yeah you did mention that yeah i i get why you pick the 80s to do a wonder woman film considering the history of wonder woman in the 80s that makes mm-hmm. sense mm-hmm. but 
Uh, as, as much as I did enjoy this, I think it would have been better to just move ahead and move ahead from the Wonder Woman we've already seen in those other movies and move forward something present tense. The other thing is, too, is uh, even though the way they bring uh, Steve Trevor, that character, back. Which is no spoiler. He's in the trailer. He's in the movie. We're not going to talk about why he's in the movie, but he's in this movie, as you know. And that's fine. I I wish it would have been like, I don't think doing it right off the bat, you know, right after seeing him in the first film and doing it right into the second movie, I don't think it was the best move. I think no, I would I have preferred to do this kind of thing like a third film or a fourth film. I feel but, like it would have had a deeper impact if it had been in, like, say, Wonder Woman 3. Yeah. I feel like I it wasn't so. quite as heart hitting emotionally hitting as it would have been if they had maybe if they had ways. So I, I definitely agree with you. I'm not hating on it, but it could have been done in a different film. Yeah. I, I would have waited to do it in the next movie. It feels too soon. Yeah. What do you, now try to help me remember. Cause I can think of one movie where what I'm about to say doesn't necessarily apply. <laughs> and that is the, the problems when you start adding more than one villain in a movie. Mm. Now, of course, the first movie that comes to mind where you have more than one villain and it works just fine is uh, The Dark Knight. Dark Knight had Joker and Two-Face in it. We all know it's quite good. It's quite good. (laughs) Works out well. Uh, Things things balanced well. Are there other movies, comic book films that have had? I mean, now there's been so many Marvel films. I'm sure there's probably been 10 of them that... (laughs) Yeah, I feel like you're putting me on the spot. So I, now I'm, I'm putting going, myself I'm going, on the I'm going, spot. Okay. I'm, in try, I'm not just asking you. I'm kind of putting it out there. Uh, but I'm trying to remember as well. Because I want to say that's another problem I have with this movie. But I'm sure then people could throw 15 examples at me of, of comic book films where it worked. Right. And no, I, I agree. The two villains in this film, I think it didn't quite work. Right. I kind of wish it had just been one. I would agree with that. Having said that, Kristen Wiig as Cheetah, I thought was yeah, delightful. I thought, she, thought she was quite good. She was she was almost mesmerizing at, at times on the, on the screen watching her, and it was it was very enjoyable seeing this the storyline of Cheetah developing the way it did. I right. think because I feel like you got to understand where she was and how she got to be, but also it was cool because there were moments you could see the bond between her and Diana and it you could tell it was gut wrenching for Diana in moments. She's just like, but but we connected. We have this great knowledge of life and history and you know, they're both big mm-hmm. nerds, you know, and like she does research to help Diana in this quest. Like she's she's excited to help Diana figure something out. And you're watching it and I'm like, this is cool. You're seeing a depth to this character that most films, I don't think you get to see that in the person who's going to be the villain. So it was cool to watch her development throughout the film. And it's it's heartbreaking when you see where she gets to in her character of Cheetah. And Kristen Wiig did a really great job of it. Yeah, I really I enjoyed it. But no, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the two villains. Any film, let alone the two villains. We, I liked one villain. I didn't like the other. You don't like <laughs> the other. I didn't dislike the other, but... I didn't dislike it, but I feel like it wasn't strong enough. Yeah. I wasn't buying into it as much, but I was enjoying Cheetah. But we're going to talk about this movie more this weekend. Yeah, really we'll get this. spoilery. Let's see, you have anything else you want to share right now? No, all I'll share is that I did enjoy Wonder Woman 84. I don't feel like my heart was broken or my hopes were dashed or anything like that. I know some people are really not happy i know some people are heartbroken about this film one thing i was going to bring up that we also touched on off air you know this movie being a kind of it'd be an interesting case study uh, a movie like this that you know they made the decision to put it out in theaters and at home on streaming at the same time and that is and i don't know how you would kind of gauge this oh but i know you're going with this now i still wonder if there's something to be said about the experience of seeing this in a theater versus at home. And I'm not talking about like the technical aspects of that. Like obviously, you know, yeah. people have great movie home movie theaters. There's no doubt these days and people have 
huge screens in their homes and great surround systems in their homes. But with that said, I mean, I think we can all agree you're not going to really truly match the experience of seeing a movie in a movie theater. It's for, the it home. factor. But to me, and that's not really what I'm referring to. I'm referring to also just the added like atmosphere, something about going to a movie theater and seeing it in a big room with other people versus when you're just watching this at home. I feel like there's still something else there that I wonder is if it's contributing to the reason why maybe you and I had a better experience of this versus what it seems like most people had, who I would imagine a lot of those people also saw it at home. I mean, a lot of these people I follow on social media live in California, and I can guarantee you 99% of them, they saw it at home unless they drove a decent distance to see it (laughs) in a theater somewhere. They went out to Vegas, yeah. Um, So I, I wonder if there's just something about that that's playing a part in this too. Right. So what I would say about the it factor is like there's an element that cannot be named, and it's a feeling that I think you get when you're seeing a movie, a film in a movie theater. And it's this it thing. And I don't know what it's to call it. This element, this feeling, right. this level that it is, this itness that it, it is. But it would be curious to line up people's reviews and find out if there's any kind of conformity to people that didn't like it and they saw it at home and people that did like it and saw it in the theater. And just to see, you know, there's got, I mean, you pop it into an algorithm and it'd be easy math to figure out, but it'd be, you'd have to know, like, did they watch it in theater? Did they watch it at home? Was it a home viewing or a theater viewing? And I'd be curious to see what the numbers looked like after that, because you and I talk about this all the time about loving a movie that we saw in theater. People hating on it and finding out that they did it in a home theater or something like that. I'm like, it's really funny how it seems. That's what it seems like. I don't know if it's true. I would love to see actual numbers. Right. I don't know either. It would be fascinating. Like, I was just going to say, for instance, like, like Jessica Chobot, uh, from Nerdist News, from what is it? The gaming thing. G, G and. Oh, G4. G4. Yeah. Um, and now she's on like discovery. Well, anyways, so she, she obviously watched it at home. She lives in California. I know she's home for Christmas because I'm a stalker on Instagram. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And she was not very happy. I don't think she was like mad at it, but she was definitely disappointed. You could tell. I mean, yeah, she she seems like to be a huge Wonder Woman fan. She's a big Wonder Woman fan. And yeah, she not happy at all. She's not happy. And I know she watched it at home. And I wonder, like Jessica, if you watched it in a theater, what if you if you and Blair had just driven out to Nevada, right? <laughs> like, what what would your day have been like? What what would mood would you have been in in that fun little drive out to Vegas, seeing it and then driving home? Like, what would you think? Like, how would you feel? And I feel and like she'd probably be like, I'm not hating on it, but it's not great, but I'm not mad at it. I think she'd have a slightly different tune. And I'm I want to be clear. I don't want to come across in any way in saying this. Like, I think people should do whatever they can to go see this in a theater and not see it. Oh, no, no, no. It's COVID. Like, (laughs) like, we did. We saw it in a movie theater. I feel like we did it very safely. We wore, we, in fact, you and I, like, we did not buy any concessions and we did not consume any drinks or popcorn or mm-hmm. any snacks in that movie theater. We kept our mask on the entire time. Never removed And we them. were in the Dolby, which is a little more spacious. Yeah, a little more spacious. And I mean, of course, they're only selling like, I think at most like 50% of the seats. But I, with that said, I... I, you want to watch this at home? You should watch it at home. Totally. Like, yes. I will be clear too. Like if, if it had been up to me, I don't think this is going to come as a surprise. If it, I, if, if this hadn't, if you didn't care if about I this movie, pushed. I had to watch this at home. I know. Like, <laughs> but I get it. I mean, if this had been a new bat, if this had been the Batman oh, yeah. <laughs> like, and I had the choice, I'd have been like, yeah, I'm going to a movie to see the theater to see the Batman. But, you know, in this case, it's Wonder Woman. It's not as much my thing. It's your That's thing. my thing. And you wanted to see it in the theater. And I'm glad I did. I'm, but just, I don't know. Just I don't want to come across. I'm like, guys, no. go see this in the theater. Do uh, a drive to Vegas if you live in L.A. No, 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 no. I, just don't, think that, I don't think that anybody listening would, would say that we're telling people to go see it in the theaters. I say if you feel comfortable enough to go to the theater, I would recommend it. But otherwise, you could totally totally just watch this in the comforts of your own home in right. your pajamas with your slippers and a bucket of popcorn and be super super happy 
Which is still weird, like coming home from the movie and being like, I could just put this movie back on right now. Like, I know. At one point, at one point, I actually was like, I almost kind of want to rewatch this one scene just so I could confirm what I'm thinking and feeling to see if you agree or not agree. Like, that's how, but it was the same time. It was like, it's so weird. We just left the movie theater and I could put this movie on and show you this scene that I'm talking about exactly. (laughs) Yeah. It's weird that that's where we are right now. So that's Woman, Woman, Wonder Woman 1984. We'll be mm-hmm. talking spoilers and all in the next episode with Bobby and Yasha. Mm-hmm. We have not talked to them yet. I'm curious. I'm very, very, I'm very, very curious, curious to hear what they think. Yeah. <laughs> like, I have no idea. There's there's plenty of movies where, I mean, we know Yasha and Bobby pretty well. And this is one of those movies. Oh, it's a coin toss. It, it seems like such a coin toss. I When I spoke to Carlton the other night, I was like genuinely like, I, I have to know. What do you think of this? Because I don't know. And he was like, oh, you know me. And I'm like, I do, but I don't know, man. Like, you could fall either way. I feel like anybody could you, fall you, either way You with could this. fall on either side of the fence with this one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I want to... I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction. <laughs> I'm going to predict that Bobby is probably along the lines of us. Mm-hmm. I feel like he's going to... I feel like he enjoyed it. Didn't love it. But there's issues. But it's there's okay. There's issues, but it's it's pretty good. Yasha, I'm still not sure. <laughs> I don't know what Yasha's gonna say. He's either gonna he's either gonna love it more than us, like he'll enjoy it more than us, or he's gonna be like, Y'all are nuts. That movie was crap. Yes, if, if, <laughs> like, if, it's I had, be one of two ways. if I had to put my money on something right now, I'm gonna go with he did not like it. I can see that. That's gonna be my bet. I'm not I'm actually betting anything, but that's my yeah, bet. Yeah, I know. Anyways. With that, anything else before we wrap things up? Anything I forgot that you watched on TikTok or, I don't know, I'm just throwing anything out there. Things that I watched on TikTok. I'm just being, come on, I'm not being serious. <laughs> I know. Well, other than that one crazy psycho kid that apparently doesn't know how to say the word in sync and or say the word Janet. Um, No, what? I haven't. Oh, I got to show you this video. This kid. <sighs> Mm, yeah, no. TikTok, it ruined you. I, I have a new phone. I don't have TikTok on there. I'm good. TikTok will ruin you. I think I'm, I'm already. You're just, already over the TikTok. I'm already over TikTok. It's... I've gotten better. Like I, I, I basically like. I feel like I won't touch it for days and days and days and days. But then I'll have one day where I'm doing nothing and I'll light two hours on fire on it, and I'm like, okay, this needs to go away. Mm. The TikTok. Mm. You know what? We didn't get any concessions, but I did get the cool Wonder Woman 84 bucket. You did. It's sitting there behind us. It's pretty cool looking, actually. It's, it's kind of, it is cool that they let you just buy it without buying the popcorn. I know. It was only like three bucks. Yeah. I was like, well, yeah. That's I'll, pretty sweet. The bucket's really cool looking. I kind of just want the bucket. Yeah. That was pretty sweet. I'm down with that. Yeah. Thanks, AMC. And I still support. Yeah. I still supported the concession stand. How about that? All right. Where they really make their money. Exactly. Except I wonder how much they made off your $3 10. It's probably a $50, 50%. Probably. They're probably paying 50 cents a piece on those things or something. I'd go as high as 85. Yeah. It is aluminum. It's 10. All right. Anyway. Anywho. <laughs> I feel like there was something else I watched. Uh, I think I say this every week. I feel like there was something else I watched this week that I'm not remembering, but no. Nope. There was just a lot of Christmas movies. Just a lot of Christmas stuff. A lot of Wonder Woman. There's a part of me that wants to try to watch Wonder Woman again this week before we do the spoiler review. We should. But there's also other stuff to watch. We'll see. Well, there's that. And then there's also the PlayStation there's also, and the Xbox. Yeah, like the, in the top 10 show now, I have to apparently prep for <laughs> I don't know how that's going to happen. That's going to be an interesting it's, one. That is going to be, I think officially that is going to be the weirdest top 10 we've ever done. Yeah. No, I mean, seriously, I'm being totally serious. It is going to be the I think strangest I said this top when, 10. Maybe, did I say this when we talked about it on the last episode where I yeah. could see a world, like an episode where we just, we go, hey, like I, you know, we do 10s and I go past, sorry, I don't have a 10. I don't have a nine. I don't, my list doesn't start till five. Yeah. You said the last show. Yeah. I could see that happening. I could see it happening. I don't know. It's been a weird year. (laughs) 
I mean, I can tell you right now, Soul will be on my list unless I find nine out of the movie, like ten of the movies. <laughs> Soul and Tenant would be on your list. Yeah, and Tenant. I mean, I like Tenant. I didn't. I don't think it's Christopher Nolan's best. No, but if you threw it up against other films for 2020, <clears throat> it's oh, up yeah. there. Oh yeah. Then see there. Yeah. There's two films. Even as a technical achievement, it's. Even as, exactly. Even as right. technical as it was, yeah, it's pretty impressive. It's going to be an interesting thing. Well, with that, we're going to wrap things up. We uh, need to. As always, we would love to hear back from everyone listening. You can email us at feedback at flickereffect.com. If you're watching, or I should say listening on YouTube, uh, please leave a comments down below or any questions you have. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Hit that bell icon to be notified whenever we post any videos in the future. Uh, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at flicker underscore effect. Reach out to us there. With that, I'm David Lott. And I'm Michelle Hillard. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.